Hello. Uh, my name is Nishat. Uh, as you heard, I'm a student here at U of I, and I'm studying psych and poetry. And yes, it is a major. Uh, it's in like the English creative writing department. But um, so uh, I get a lot of mixed reactions when I tell people this, uh, whether it's at you know class or just on the streets or at parties, RSOs, different clubs. And um, there's four very commonplace reactions that I get. And I want to run one through them with you guys. So um, the first reaction that I get when I say I'm studying psych and poetry, people are like, oh, that's cool, like whatever, yeah. And they kind of just like walk off. And that's understandable, because like U of I, let's be honest, you know, you know a lot of people by their first name, their last name, and their major, if that. Sometimes you just know them as like, I think that's Jim or John or Joe, but he studies history, that's all I know about him. So I get that, you know, they just kind of brush it off, that's fine. And the second reaction that I, say, that I get when I say I'm, I'm studying psych and poetry is, uh, oh, that's cool, because, um, you know, there's like five of us doing psychology and poetry here at U of I. Um, there's not that many. The third reaction, and this is my favorite reaction I get, um, which is a lot, like, all the time. They, they say, uh, poetry, huh? You, you, that, that, that's amazing. You can study poetry here? And yeah, you can. It's pretty awesome. It's a good time. And the last reaction, the one I want to talk about that often comes in tandem with the third reaction is, uh, so poetry, huh? How are you gonna, how are you gonna get a job? What are you gonna do? Any, money, yeah, no? You're not gonna make the money? You're not gonna do that? Um, <laughs> and so, instead of, just, uh, instead of just explaining to you why I'm choosing to do what I do, I'd like to uh, take my craft and perform a poem for you that I wrote for this. Um, can I do that? Can I give you guys a poem? Is that, is that cool, yeah? All right, cool. So here it is. When I told my mother, that I was going from psych in pre-med into psych in poetry. She began to worry, as every mother does, wondering how could my son throw away his future for writing down these words. And the first question my father asked me was, how do you plan to make a living from that? And some of my friends laughed. And some of my teachers shook their heads, muttering to me their eulogies before I was even dead. But why should it matter what kind of money this brings? If money had no value, how rich would you be? We get 75 years or 80 at the least in my estimation. And my declaration is that I don't want to be 45 beginning to regret the rest of my life. What are your passions? What do you love? If money had no value, what would be your job? And are you on that path now? If no, why not? Raised in a culture where everyone feels this pressure to become engineers or doctors, I'm trying to proctor a future where I don't feel stuck because if I don't love what I do, then what's the point of all the school, these years that I've given up? And what about you? What's holding you back from the freedom that you've been lacking? Is it your father? Is it your mother? Is it your so-called friends? Is it your teachers? Or is it a step further? Is it society? Are you doing it to yourself? Are you manufacturing your own future hell? I want to spend the rest of my life living on sacks of paper that I create, not these green bills that I'm forced to make. If money had no value, what would you chase? If money had no value, tell me, what would you chase? I'm chasing poetry. It's my passion, it's what I love, and despite having plans to go to grad school for psychology and another who knows how many years um, doing things in school, um, on the side, I've also, I've taken my poetry to places, and I plan to do it the rest of my life. Um, just two months ago, I self-published a book called The Things That Don't Teach You in School that features about 70 or so poems that I've written over the past two years. Um, I run a blog that has thousands of followers. Um, I've amassed over half a million hits worldwide. I get messages from China and Denmark and Australia and all these other exotic places that are really cool and people are saying, wow, your poetry really speaks to me and I love it, thank you for doing it. Um, and not only just writing that, I've taken my poetry and moved them into lyrics and I sing in a band and we've, we've played shows here at ISU at Bradley University. We've played with nationally acclaimed bands at venues in Chicago. We've even gone out of state to Indiana and we have uh, plans for that, you know, more out of state stuff later on. And you might be sitting here thinking, well, that's good for you, Nishat, um, but I'm, I'm not a poet. Uh, how, does this, how does this affect me? And the thing is, I didn't just get lucky. I didn't have anyone sitting there saying, yeah, go do that, man. You grab those poetic dreams. 
Um, no, I, I met a lot of backlash from different people along this journey, but, but I loved it, and I still love it, and I will always love it, and that's why I chase it. That's why I'm going for it. I didn't have anyone to say, here's some cash, go publish your book. I didn't have people saying, let me make your blog the first hit on Google. Let me give your band some money to record, let you guys travel to out of state and pay for gas and equipment and all that. No one did that for me. But what, what, what I want to leave you with is this, that despite who is supporting you or who might be holding you back, whatever it is that you love, whether it's poetry or it's business or it's art or it's whatever, whatever you find passion with, follow that because your future is no one but your own. No one makes that decision for you. And the choice of your future happiness, that is also yours. Thank you.